All right, hello everybody. Thank you for attending our session. This is Chemistry Teaching and Research Lab Swing Spaces, made easy and efficient. With me today is... I am Tony Patone, Principal at BR Plus A Consulting Engineers. And I'm Ken Crooks with Erlab, the Green Fume Hood Director. Our learning objectives today, I won't read the whole slides to you, just understand how swing spaces can be made easy. How can we limit the impact on construction and budget and so forth? Identify when and where filtered fume hoods can be safely deployed in those swing spaces. Understand the accommodations that may be needed in a research environment, especially compared to a teaching environment. And then analyze some lessons learned uh, in our whole experience on this multi-phase project. So our case study today that we want to present to you is Wellesley College. They're in the Metro West Boston area. And uh, very much that beautiful, iconic New England college setting that, that everybody sees in the movies. Uh, I think they're all filmed right here too, not just Harvard. And uh, this is a woman-only college, so it's 2,350 women and on a 500-acre campus, founded back in 1870. And this slide here, just to show Wellesley College's commitment to sustainability, back in 2016, they, the Board of Trustees approved a sustainability plan that then launched the E2040 Working Group, and their goal is to achieve carbon neutrality by 2040. Uh, you can see the steps they're going to make in 26 is going to be a i'm sorry in 2026 there will be a 37 percent reduction to their baseline 2036 they'll have achieved a 44 percent reduction and then by 2040 they'll get that whole 100 percent reduction and get get onto their goal of carbon neutrality uh, pretty impressive goals and this project actually helped them quite a bit in the thank you ken so the science center renovation and addition is without question the largest most complex project taken to date um, at Wellesley College. The uh, construction cost was just north of $220 million. Um, it included the build of some temporary lab spaces as a college. We can't demo and rip apart existing buildings and just turn classes off. They need to take place in other buildings. Um, we have renovation of the L wing, renovation of the E wing, uh, demolition of Sage Hall, and then the new build. So what does the new Science Center look like today? On the right-hand side is, in the gray bar is the new L-Wing. On the left-hand side, the small gray bar is the E-Wing, e, uh, e which is the education uh, wing. And the kind of the pink starfish is the new build. <laughs> um, you know, as you can see that there's a large list of uh, energy conservation measures in this building. And, uh, you know, for, for BR plus A for, on the engineering, Side, the linchpin to do what we did was without question the filtered fume hoods. Oh, it's music to my ears. Thank you. So, sustainability. Uh, as we were renovating the L Wing, we looked at a bunch of different things. Um, and without question, the biggest bang for our buck was to start to pull out the ductive fume hoods out of uh, the teaching classrooms. Uh, today, there, are, oh, there was 70 ducted fume hoods, Ken. Mm. Um, we studied pulling out as many as we could. Um, we knew that research still wanted some ducted fume hoods, but there was no reason why we couldn't use filtered fume hoods um, in the teaching classrooms. So I uh, kind of shook out. We had we ended up installing 41 filtered fume hoods in the teaching classroom. Each teaching classroom did have one ducted hood. And uh, we end up um, leaving 29 or replaced 29 variable volume fume hoods in the research labs. Uh, Ken, pretty amazing. Uh, the 20 year net present savings was over $4 million. That's amazing. And, and the best part about this, these filtered fume hoods, we were able to actually install them in the swing space trailers. So we're gonna save $40 million and we have a product that's gonna make our life a lot easier in the swing space. Excellent. I think you just said 40 million. We'll go with the 40 oh, million. Did I? Yeah, <laughs> it's four, <laughs> sorry. But I like the 42. Yes. No, that's fantastic. Like you said, installed in the swing spaces for the first phase, but then moved over and we'll, We'll show pictures of exactly uh, in just a minute. So here, here's a quick photo of one of the chemistry teaching labs before the renovation started. You can see it's a rather old uh, ducted fume hood there. No problem. The students and teachers were off to the left, and I didn't want to be too intrusive, so I just took, took a quick photo and then got out of there. And then uh, here we are, I think about 24 months later now from when I took that first photo. This is the renovated laboratory. Uh, this is the organic chemistry teaching lab. The teacher's hood is still in blue. That's the Wellesley blue color. And every time I show this photo, you know, nationally to all the different projects I'm working on, everybody gravitates to that. Isn't this a wonderful idea? 
a combination of administrative and engineering controls, you walk into that lab and because of the color difference, we can use whatever your school color is, because of that color difference, I know which one's the ducted hood and I know which ones are the students' filtered fume hoods. To me, being more on the mechanical side of things, I see that big stainless steel duct coming out of the top and I think I already know which one's the ducted one, but that's okay. I'm not a researcher, I get it. Uh, what you can see in the after photo is there's four more filtered fume hoods on the other side. So a total of nine hoods in a lab, one of them being ducted, and it makes perfect sense from an airflow component uh, view also in that the minimum ventilation, you might as well put it up a ducted hood, and that gives them all the flexibility they need. If there's ever anything they want to demonstrate or do that a filtered hood couldn't handle, the teacher can do that in, in her or his lab uh, hood, and then also they can do any research and who knows what research they might be working on in the future. Yeah, Ken, then, that's a really good point. So the single ducted hood does provide the code required minimum ventilation rates for the laboratories. Yep, perfect, excellent. So the need for swing space, as Tony said, was to keep the teaching going. This is a business, if you will, and they cannot just shut down and wait 18 months for construction to complete. So the students have to learn, they've signed up. It's a multi-year program like all other colleges, universities. So with the swing space, they didn't miss a day, they didn't miss an hour, they didn't miss a minute of instruction. Uh, the physical, in, physical plant impacts uh, of using all those ducted hoods, we actually freed up capacity in the physical plant for future use by the college if they need to. Um, or maybe took it out of running at 110% for that matter. Yep, for sure. Yep, and then the swing space, you know, there's challenges if you use ducted hoods in that sort of application. Where would, uh, sorry for the trade name, where would the exhaust fan go, the hazardous fume hood exhaust fan? It can't just be down on the parking lot level. That wouldn't be safe. It's supposed to be way away from our breathing zones. Uh, filtered fume hood solved that and reduced uh, exhaust volume by at least 25,000 CFM. Right. Ken, never mind the fact that you would have to duct each one of those hoods. It would probably be welded stainless. You'd be running that either straight up or into the ceiling cavity, then to the roof of the trailers. That's a good point because well, as you're going to see in some of the photos coming up, there isn't room in the ceiling cavity in these buildings. So here's what it looks like. Phase one, when it's built out, the swing space is four different blocks in four different colors to help with signage and understanding which classes were taught where. Uh, on the right hand side, that is the central corridor looking from the gray block, which is the 400 block, all the way up to that vanishing point uh, to the 100 block on the other end. And, and just once you entered the space, you would not know you were in a swing space or a temporary building. I mean, it was amazing what they did. I, I was just blown away. Very, very impressive swing space. From a plan view, what it looks like on the left-hand side, the 100 block, they had a small vivarium. We had a four-foot hood up in the vivarium also. They had a research lab with four hoods in it, and they had the chem prep down the bottom. The chem prep was also the chem storage, all locked, you know, as per codes and security. They even had their own loading dock outside, which was a brilliant idea because you got to safely receive your chemicals and also uh, send off your hazardous waste that needs to go out uh, to be treated properly. In the 200 block is all the chemistry teaching. Up top were two general chemistry teaching labs, and down the bottom on the left there was an organic chemistry teaching lab. I've got a photo coming up of that and, and the eight hoods in there. As usual, organic chemistry is number one application for these types of hoods. Uh, it's just, it's a high hood density, two students per hood. Everybody's got a half of a six foot hood, basically. The biology teaching laboratory block, the 300 block, as usual, biology is not nearly as hood intensive, but we still had, what's a total of five, four filtered hoods in that block. And then down the end, neurobio, and also a flex lab with a few hoods in that too. So that's basically the plan layout. Ken, and pretty amazing. This is 30,000 square feet of trailer. Ah, thank you. 30,000 square feet of temporary swing space. And as you'll see in these, you would not know. You would definitely not know you're in a trailer. I mean, the, this, I think, is five trailers all bolted together, interior walls cut out, new sheetrock put up, new ceiling put up, new flooring, and boom, you're in just a big organic chemistry teaching laboratory. A couple challenges, though, trailers are eight foot height. So as you can see, these fume hoods do go right up to the ceiling and actually into the ceiling a small amount. This here is the research laboratory with four hoods uh, tied, tied together. Some of the concessions on the research side is uh, they couldn't have the gases piped. They did have air and vacuum, but they didn't have water or any gases piped into the trailers. So they just had to clear it with the researchers that they would be fine using hoods with those limitations for this 18 month period while phase two is, is getting ready. Phase one's being completed. Uh, so when we speak of concessions, that was one of the concessions that had to be made during this period of time. But the fume hoods were fully fitted with all the valves and fixtures so that once they were moved over, they were connected and boom, off and running. 
so as I said, the hoods do go up into the ceiling because it is a low, low ceiling, but I can't imagine trying to fit 10 inch or 12 inch stainless welded ductwork up there. Forget it. Yeah, exactly, exactly, right? So it's another, another good advantage of using the filter hood. So once phase two, the renovation uh, start, was complete, the renovation was complete, phase two started, sorry. It was then time to move some or all of these 39 filtered hoods out. So on the left is the four foot hood in the vivarium as it was being installed originally. Mm -hmm. Then 18 months later, we moved it over and a change of filters, an update on the sensors, and it is now a geology lab hood. I mean, it was really just that simple. Um, well, just that simple. Okay, so there's some sweat involved. You gotta move some filters around, you gotta move some hoods around, you gotta stage the filtration as shown on the right. Uh, but really, it, it's no more difficult to move it than it was to install the hood structure to begin with, put it on that, that pallet, put it on the moving dollies, and then push it down that central corridor uh, to the loading dock. Uh, no blood, no tears, just a bit of sweat. And here it was uh, coming out the end uh, by the loading, or not the loading dock, sorry, the ramp. Now, fortunately, ADA compliance, they had to have a ramp anyways. They had the foresight to make it big enough for a six-foot hood to fit right down. Um, it was tight, but we got it around that corner and got it up on the lift and delivered it to the renovated science building as shown on the right. Put it right up the, uh, the main elevator and into the lab it needed to go into. It was really basically rinse, repeat 38 more times. And pretty easy to do. And then as, as the space sort of emptied out on the swing spaces and freed up, there were sort of comical moments. I, I just had to put this one in here. You know, lock this door when you leave, especially after 6 p.m. So I did. I turned the little lock on the door, I felt better about it, and tried not to bump into the emergency shower on my way out. Ken, it was more secure. Thank you for it, locking it that was, door. It was definitely more secure. Thanks, Tony. <laughs> and then as I got out to my car, this is quite, this is not like I'm not staging these photos. Literally, I got out to my car in the parking lot. I bet you can guess which one's mine. And in pulls this 18 wheeler. It's the end of the day. They've got the, tr the crane all set up there. In come the, the ducted fume hood, hazardous exhaust fans that are going to go up on the roof of the new building. And I thought, wow, I just moved 39 hoods, started up 39 hoods, and I'm out of here. These guys, got, they're going to work all night just getting those, those things up there, the, you know, those things, the exhaust fans. So you can see why my, my license plate is no duck. So if you ever see me on the highway, just give me a friendly wave. So we want to talk about lessons learned. I mean, when we think about this now, phase two is complete. You know, the hoods are out of the swing space. You know, what do we do right? What do we do wrong? What are some of the challenges? Uh, one of the challenges I ran into, actually, after the hoods were initially installed in the swing space, was with the, the certifier, the test and balance certifier here, using a smoke wand, and this very hood. It's the only one that gave us trouble, and really, it was because it was tucked into a corner, right up against that wall, and then there was a supply diffuser just above the hood. Can't see it in the photo, but it was blowing air down, and since it was such a low ceiling to begin with, that air was coming down right over the certifier's right-hand shoulder creating some swirls in there. We were losing containment on the far right-hand side of this fume hood. And that's, that's not acceptable. You know, I don't care if it's ducted, filtered, or whatnot. You can't lose containment on a fume hood. So we lowered the sash height just a little bit to help increase the velocity. I think we dropped it down one step, which is about two inches, and then blocked the supply diffuser right above the hood because that was creating that whole swirling effect to begin with. And voila, it passed no problem. So they moved the diffuser back a few feet, you know, a couple of ceiling tiles, and not a problem whatsoever. Everything passed, good to go. Now, Ken, Wellesley College was super appreciative that our design team was able to implement a product that was gonna sit temporarily in these trailers, make it a cleaner environment, much better teaching atmosphere. And then we we'll know what, we're gonna move the filtered fume hoods to their final resting place. Right. right. In the L wing. Exactly. Um, it, 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 it was a very, it was with military precision how we got this done. Woo, all right, fantastic. Well, when I was, I was there not too long ago, just before classes started up this semester, and the director of the science building, Kathy, stopped by, and she just wanted to say, you know, I'm so happy we did this. It was the right decision. She was really our internal champion, just making sure everybody was, was on board with this and pushing it hard. She was phenomenal. Yeah, she really was. She, she's a great person. And uh, she said, Ken, we're going to save millions with these hoods. And I kind of sat there thinking, oh, hundreds of thousands, absolutely, but millions, I'm not so sure. So on my own, I calculated just south of two million, but seeing your $4 million study, uh, I'm on board. That's just fantastic. And I, I can imagine they're quite pleased with that. And they're working fine. Their classes have begun. Uh, we did our two year maintenance on the hoods and uh, that was just changing out the acid detector. It, it needs to be changed every two years. They're good to go. They, like other applications, will, will achieve a very long filter life 
because in these student hoods they're using so little you know it's administered it's controlled and it's so little and infrequent that the filtered fumes just they return a tremendous value then can you think about it so uh the professor lab set up in the, in the renovated l wink right we go to set up an experiment all the fume sashes go full open so exhaust goes full flow supply air goes full flow it's difficult to teach in that lab with all that air noise being run through the lab with one ducted fume hood in all of the filtered fume hoods it's a much quieter environment uh, much better teaching atmosphere for the students yeah. and, the, and the professors. That's fantastic too. And that, it's actually not a shock to me. We get that feedback from a lot of our customers. Wow, it's, it's just so much quieter than the, the sort of low frequency rumble we get when all the students open up their sashes on their ducted hoods. So teachers love that. They don't have to shout. They can keep a, a better eye and control. And they can hear what's going on in the laboratory. And they can see it and they can hear it. And that's, that's fantastic. And these proved to be very easy to move when it came time to, to relocate them into the renovated laboratories. The benefits of the swing space, uh, definitely a lot of benefits. We talk about minimize movement of faculty. Faculty don't want to be moved. Do they want renovated labs and new labs? Heck yeah, I'm sure they do, don't we all? But, you know, move me once, but that's it. So that's what we can do with a swing space type approach is just minimal movement until the lab is renovated and then move everybody over doing it between classes, between semesters. I mean, like you said, it was really, it was military precision. It, it, it worked out very, very well. Shortened timeline overall also, compared to all that duct work that would have been required in the mechanical systems, and then obviously the lower cost, which we've already spoke about. Right. Um, Ken, the other piece, they didn't have to cancel class, right? Chemistry 101 wasn't canceled. They took that program from the L-Wing to be renovated, brought it over to the trailers, taught the classes, and now we're back in the L-Wing. Yeah, that's fantastic. Exactly. Not not a day, not an hour, not a minute lost time. Yep. yep. And that's that's certainly value. That's that's why people go to the school to learn, correct? And then the other benefit too, not on this slide, but I wanted to speak about it quickly is obviously from a sustainability standpoint and an environmental standpoint, I did a quick calculation of 39 six foot ducted hoods and compared that to the filtered equivalents. And basically we're gonna save, depending on use, and just assuming five days a week, partial day use, somewhere around 6,200 tons of CO2 is saved or, or not, not generated uh, by using the filtered hoods. And that, that's the total life cycle cost. BR Plus A has done a great job looking at the 20 year life cycle cost um, of filtered versus ducted. You save about 94% by using a filtered hood when it's safe and appropriate to do so. It's not for every application, but it's certainly ideal in these teaching laboratories. And I think that's, uh, that's it for me. Any final no. No, Ken, thank you for the opportunity. Yeah, thank you very much, I2SL. We appreciate the opportunity. We'll be here to answer your questions, and um, please don't hesitate to ask them. Thank you very much.